Now I want to describe the calculus of a parametric curve. A parametric curve is movement along a shape. But what is the slope of that shape? What is the speed of the movement? What is the distance covered? These were the fundamental questions of single variable calculus. How can I answer these questions for curves? So let me start with slopes. The slope is the rate of change of y in terms of x. In a parametric curve, both x and y depend on t. And there are two time derivatives, dx dt and dy dt. How then does y change in terms of x? The answer is that the slope is just the ratio of the two time derivatives. This looks like the simplification of a nested fraction where the dt terms cancel. It isn't. Derivatives are not fractions, though they are somewhat like fractions. Regardless, the intuition matches here. In this rate, the time disappears, and the result is just a measure of how y changes in x, just the slope of the shape. That is, I hope, a pretty clear calculation. I just need the two time derivatives, and then I just need to take their ratio. That gives the slope to any point on a parametric curve. Note that if the x-coordinate has a zero derivative, the slope isn't defined due to division by zero. Often this will indicate a vertical tangent. This is the graph of a parametric curve called the folium of Descartes. I'll use this curve to give an example of slopes. This is the formula for the folium of Descartes. To find the slope, I need the two time derivatives, one for x and one for y. Here are those derivatives, which are both calculated by the quotient rule. At this point in the course, I'm fine with derivatives being done by computer. I no longer need to see the details of your derivative calculations. Then I will take the ratio of these. The denominators are the same, so they will cancel. Well, then I'll expand the multiplications in each numerator and simplify. I can also factor out 3 to give this final form of the expression. This is undefined when t is the cube root of 1 half. In the graph in the previous slide, there was one point on the outside of the loop where there was a vertical tangent. This point happens exactly at time equal to the cube root of 1 half. Here is another curve to do a slope example. This is the logarithmic spiral. And there are many places where there are vertical tangents, so I expect the derivative to be undefined at all of these places. Here is the algebraic description of the logarithmic spiral. I can differentiate each of the coordinates in the variable t, both are product rule derivatives. Then I take the ratio of these, y derivative over x derivative. I can factor out the exponential to produce this expression for the slope. The denominator is 0 when cos t minus sine t is 0, which with a little bit of trig is the same as when tan t equals 1. There are infinitely many such points, which matches the graph where I expected many, many vertical tangents. In addition to the slope, I would like to define a notion of distance. To determine distance, I can define something called the distance parameter. This definition will pay dividends in future videos as well. For some movement along the curve, there is movement in the x direction and movement in the y direction. The total movement is approximated by a straight line given by Pythagoras. This movement is labeled delta s. Then I can ask what happens over an interval of time, delta t, taking the ratio of delta s over delta t by delta x over delta t and delta y over delta t. And finally, I take the limit of this relationship as the change in time goes to zero, and the result is the Pythagorean combination of the two derivatives. This is the rate of change of distance, the square root of the squares of the rate of change of the two coordinates. This is scalar velocity how much the parameter, the distance parameter s, changes in time t. This is speed. Let me show you some examples. How fast is movement along a straight line? Gamma of t equals tt is a curve which goes upward and to the right on a diagonal line. The two time derivatives are both 1, so the Pythagorean combination of these is root 2. Therefore, the speed of this curve is constant root 2 units of distance per unit of time. And this makes sense for uniform movement along a straight line. For every unit of time, the curve goes over 1 and up 1, which is the same thing as going root 2 along the diagonal. I can reparameterize this straight line in many ways. I've put 2 on these slides, a parameterization in terms of t squared t squared, or 1 as 1 over t 1 over t. In each case, I can calculate the time derivatives, 2t for both in the first case, and negative 1 over t squared for both in the second. Then I use Pythagoras on these derivatives to get the overall speed. 
The result is 2 root 2t for the first variant. This shows that the t squared t squared reparameterization is accelerating. The speed is getting larger over time. The speed is root 2 over t squared for the second, which shows how the speed is decreasing for the second parameterization. The last example for speed is the cycloid. How fast is movement along this curve? Well, here is the algebraic description of the curve and the two derivatives. I square both, add them together, take the square root, and then there is some simplifying algebra to do. I square the first term and expand it, then I group terms, and then I factor again. And this is the result. One thing that is interesting about this speed is that at multiples of 2 pi, cosine is 1, and when this is true, the speed is 0. So once every cycle, the speed is momentarily 0. On the graph, this momentarily 0 speed happens at the sharp corners. The curve moves faster at the top of the arc and then slows down as it approaches the x-axis. When it touches the x-axis, it is momentarily stationary before the speed starts to increase again.